So our first complete example, we'll talk about air being pumped into a spherical balloon, and that air is entering the balloon at a rate of four and a half cubic inches per minute. We want to know the rate of change of the radius when the radius is two. So we have our knowns and unknowns. So we make a sketch. Our known is that the volume is changing at 4.5 cubic inches per minute and the volume is increasing so the air is being pumped into the balloon so the volume is increasing so the rate of change of the volume is positive we're trying to find dr dt and we, we are trying to do that at the instant when r is equal to 2 so we set up the relationship uh, amongst or between the variables so we have v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed and then we take the derivative of both sides of that with respect to time and then I can substitute in the known values. I know dvdt. I was told it was four and a half. I know the radius at the current time is two. So I can make both of those substitutions and then solve for dr dt. All right, notice here in this example, the only variables were v and r. So it's a pretty straightforward problem. All right, a more complicated problem. It might look something like this. We have a plane flying horizontally at, al at, at an altitude of six miles on a path directly over a radar tracking station. Uh, let S represent the total distance between the station and the plane. If S is decreasing at a rate of 400 miles per hour, when s equals 10, what is the velocity of the plane? So our diagram might look like this. We have a plane flying at an altitude of 6 miles, and it is flying in a horizontal direction. The radar tracking station is at that lower right corner there. All right, so it's flying overhead past the radar tracking station and we're told that ds dt, so this hypotenuse here, the distance between the station and the plane, is decreasing at 400 miles per hour. So ds dt is negative 400. We're trying to find dx dt when s equals 10. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem here to relate these quantities. So notice here that I have x squared plus 6 squared equals s squared. So this altitude here is 6, and it's a constant 6. It never changes. It doesn't vary at any time during this, the, the course of this problem. The plane is only traveling in a horizontal direction, so that altitude of 6 is always constant. So we can use that value right from the start of the problem. We want to be careful not to do that for any quantities that vary with time as the problem is, is, is kind of moving along. Notice here they told us when s equals 10. I am not going to use s equals 10 here because s is not always 10. s is changing with time. All right, that's a really important part of doing these related rates problems. So now I have that set up. I take the, um, the derivative with respect to time of both the left and the right. So I have 2x dx dt, again using the chain rule. The derivative of 36 is 0, so we have equals 2s ds dt. So now I can substitute in what I know. So I'm looking for dx dt. I know s is equal to 10, and I know ds dt is equal to negative 400 miles per hour. And here you notice that I filled in x equals 8. So the question comes up, how do we know that x was equal to 8? It didn't tell us that in the problem. Okay, but I can look at the geometry of this problem and say, okay, well, if at a given moment s equals 10 and this altitude is 6, then I can use the Pythagorean theorem and say 10 squared equals 6 squared plus x squared. 
and I can figure out that x has to equal 8. 100 minus 36 equals x squared. Once I do that, dx dt is the only variable that's left, that rate of change of x. And I find that dx dt is negative 500. All right. One thing that I should note, when we went back and looked at this original problem, it asks, what is the velocity of the plane? It doesn't really ask me, what is dx dt? All right. I had to decide that the velocity of the plane in this horizontal direction was represented by how fast this distance from here to here was changing. So I had to make the determination that that was dx dt that I was actually looking for. Right? And I would expect that to be negative because as the plane moves to the right here, this leg or the base of this triangle is going to become shorter. So I know that uh, my, my answer at least passes a sanity check of it is negative um, it's moving in, in the negative direction, so it's moving toward that radar station, and this base is becoming shorter and not longer.